Dear students, in this video I'd like to talk about the Calvaria, the Fontanelles and the Emissary Foramina of the skull. First of all, let's see what are the bones building the Calvaria and where we can find actually the Calvaria. So, we have to use a plan and through this plan we have to cut the skull into two parts. The first point that you have to follow is the supraorbital border that you can find here and you have to bind this bony part of the skull with the external occipital protuberance and through this line if you cut the skull you got the calvaria. So what are the bones? Here you can see the frontal bone this is an unpaired bone. We find here the two parietal bones. These are paired. Here you can see the occipital bone. And the squamous part of the temporal is another part of the calvaria. This is what you can see here. So let's see. So between these bones you find a continuous bone connection this is syndesmosis and the syndesmosis means a connective tissue like ligaments and the special type of the syndesmosis is called suture. We have three different types of the sutures. One is the serrate. Uh, this is what you can find between the bones of the calvaria. Another type is the squamous here. It's like the scale of a fish. And the third type is the plan suture. This is a connection between the parts of the visceral cranium. So let's see the sutures between the bones of the calvaria. Here you can see the coronal suture. This is a serrate type. Another is the sagittal suture in the midline between the two parietal bones. Between the two parietal bones and the occipital bone, you see the lambdoid suture, another serrate type, and this one is called squamous suture, which is in one hand the name of the suture, and in the other hand, this is the type of this syn desmosis. In front of the squamous suture, you can see the sphena parietal suture here. And there you can see the parietal mastoid suture. In the frontal bone, you can see two bigger parts, um, kind of enlargement, which is called frontal tuber. In Latin, this is the tuber frontale. A similar structure is visible here in the parietal, on the parietal bone, which is called parietal tuber tuber parietale in Latin and the external occipital protuberance or protuberantia occipitalis externa in Latin is the fifth palpable point on the skull. But what are these tubers uh, what we can palpate? For example, if you touch your forehead uh, you can find sometimes this pumps which uh, are made by these bones. So these are the ossification centers and as you remember the development of the skull you find there and the development of the story that these bones are made by so-called desmal ossification. So where you can palpate this point these were, as I said, the ossification centrums. So the ossification proceeds in a radial direction. So as I said, we can find now sutures between uh, the bones of the calvarium, but before birth and uh, during the labor, we found there a different structure, a kind of connective tissue plate and this is called fontanel or fonticulus in Latin. So just let's see this head of a 
newborn or almost newborn child, you can see here that we had two fontanelles, two big fontanelles. The anterior or major fontanelle is visible here. Its shape is rhomboid and we can find it between the two frontal and the two parietal bones. Okay, so why did I say two frontal bones? Um, originally, we had two ossification centers of the frontal bone and the two ossification centers fused together and this is the process how they built one unpaired frontal bone. Um, we can see here between the parietal bones and the occipital bone a triangular shaped fontanelle which is called posterior or minor fontanelle. Um, we have two smaller fontanelles, one is the sphenoid, the other is the mastoid. What is the clinical relevance of these fontanelles? So first during the labor the flat cranial bones can slide on each other making it easier to get through, I mean making the skull uh, easier through the birth canal. The other thing um, is, which is based on its consistency, these are not so dense parts of the skull than the other bones. So this is a palpable point during the labor. We can find, uh, we can define the position of the head in the birth canal using mostly the major fontanelle. And the other is, which is based on its transparency, we can perform ultrasound in order to examine the ventricles of the brain. You have to know that the anterior fontanelle fuses after the 18th, 24th month and the triangular shaped minor is around the second and third month after birth. Let's just go back to the adult skull and let's talk about the other parts of the calvaria to make it easier and just remove it from the rest of the skull. It was so easy now but normally we have to use a saw or something like that. As I said at the outer surface we can see the tubers and the sutures but sometimes we can recognize here small holes like these two and um, this hole is called foramina. This is the parietal foramina here and we have another which is called mastoid foramina. What is the importance of these small holes? So through these holes um, emissary veins, emissaries, emissary veins are going through and what is the importance of these emissary veins? An emissary vein is a special connection between the intra and extracranial veins. The extracranial veins are normal veins, but the intracranial venous uh, spaces are the so-called sinuses. A sinus, in this case, um, means that this is a special type of vein and the wall of this vein is formed by the dura mater. So this is a duplication of the dura mater which is filled with venous blood and it doesn't contain valves. Okay, so let's see the inner surface of the calvaria. We can see and we can recognize here again the sutures, but in the middle there we can see a groove. This groove is called groove for the superior sagittal sinus or in Latin this is the sulcus uh, for the superior sagittal sinus sulcus sinus sagittal superior. This impression is made by the superior sagittal sinus. Again, this sinus is a venous space, a venous space which is filled with venous blood and it is formed by the layers of the dura mater. If we follow this groove, we see here a crest in Latin, crista. This is the frontal crest. Another groove is the so-called arterial groove. You can see here, it looks like the branches of a tree and uh, mostly you can find them 
here, um, in the inner surface of the parietal bone, these are impressions of the middle meningeal artery. What is the middle meningeal artery? The middle meningeal artery is the most important artery that supplies the dura mater and the clinical importance of this artery that if it is uh, ruptured, mm, maybe because of a um, head trauma, it can cause really severe epidural bleeding. For more details, please check the lecture from Patot. On the sides of the superior sagittal sinus, we find the arachnoid granulation, um, but without the sinus, we see only the groove, and in, 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 the bo in both sides of this groove, the granular fovel. This is an impression, and this granulation plays an important role in the circulation of the cerebrospinal fluid. You can see here a schematic group drawing about the layers of the skull, but you are going to learn about in the neuroanatomy semester with more details. Okay, so the Calvario was so simple. Um, thank you for your attention.